Welcome back to our channel guys. If you're new here, I'm Andre and this is Lisa. We are taking a small break from our regular travel videos and we want to make a special video to share some information with you with regards to choosing your first motorhome. Before we kick off with question number one, we are sitting in good a... Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Italy. We're actually sitting in a very random parking lot. It's, it's like 10.30 on a Thursday morning uh, along the coast in Puglia. And the weather's a little bit volatile, so if the light changes, I, I'm really sorry. We're going to try and make the most of it, and we're going to keep this short, but stick to the end. We'll give you a few little bonus tips at the end. Now, who are we, and why can we give you some advice? You don't have to trust us if you don't want to, but we've been living in a motorhome. In this motorhome. In this one, full-time, for more than a year, in Europe and we've learned a few lessons along the way and it hasn't always been easy but we have some experience traveling in a motorhome so we're going to dive into the questions you need to ask yourself before you choose your first motorhome. In 2018 we came to Europe for four months, five months and we used a, a borrowed family owned motorhome to travel some countries in Europe. That was our first little taster. We came back in 2021 and we decided to buy our own and do the whole thing and get a real feel for it. Before we get started, just remember there's no such thing as the perfect single option for everybody. Uh, there's no one size fit all solution. And we're not trying to tell you which motorhome no. is best for you. What we're trying to tell you is what questions you should ask yourself so that you can find the right motorhome for yourself. And of course, there's no substitute for having the opportunity to do what we did in 2018. There's just no substitute for actually living in a vehicle and seeing what it's like. So let's start with the first category. How will you be using the motorhome that you're considering purchasing? Will you be living in it full time or will you be only using it for certain holidays, maybe just weekend trips, month long trips? three months long trips this makes a big difference in what you're looking for if you are also using it only seasonally that makes a difference and what season are you looking for a summer vehicle in the 40 degree heat in italy mm -hmm. or are you going to scandinavia and you want to miss the peak season so you're going there even in the colder months this is the key question how will you use it and obviously we're not all in it for the same reasons you know, living in full-time our motorhome has not been designed to live in full-time why do you need to ask these questions imagine you you, you dream of this um, Instagram type the hashtag van life situation. with a big sliding door wide uh -huh. open exactly <laughs> no but, mosquito nets oh but but you know you conveniently forget about those basic necessities like power and water <laughs> you know and the fact that you might need to go to a toilet every now and then and in bad weather conditions you can't do everything outside of your vehicle you mm -hmm. end up spending a lot more time inside of the vehicle and ventilation becomes even more important ask yourself how much power do you need are you a digital nomad do you need to run your electronics or do you prefer not having a gas uh, fridge you want a compressor an electric fridge that means you need more power how much water can you carry? how long do you plan on staying away from water sources how much gray water can you carry for example or gas so it comes down to also in combination with this what class of vehicle you should consider because you get like micro camper van styles you will get motorhomes like this and then obviously there's everything in between all the way up to luxury buses and 4x4 overland trucks. And size is a consideration you should always keep in the back of your mind. And the thing is, each one of these vehicles has its own purpose. Each one is suitable for a different scenario. So there's not mm. just one right vehicle or the optimal vehicle. It really depends on how you plan on using it. And keeping in mind that if it's a compact vehicle that could be categorized as a like a normal car uh, like for example in scandinavia i think sweden specifically they talk about class one and class two vehicles class one vehicle is allowed to park places where mm. class two vehicles are not allowed so that's one thing as we found is as a motorhome you know there's no hiding that this is a motorhome <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time we also feel that a motorhome like this because we're living in it full time offers us a lot more luxuries and other comforts that are more suitable to full-time living in a vehicle lifestyle 
and just in addition to use scenario of course if you're going to be going across Africa or into Morocco and you want your 4x4 vehicle that's great and it might be best suited for the trip mm. but you also need to consider where will you be storing this vehicle when you are not using it oh, if you yes. live in a city will you be paying to store it somewhere or is a more compact vehicle more practical so that you can store it on a day-to-day -day basis and perhaps even use it as a daily vehicle mm. One more thing when it comes to class of vehicle is to consider what its Euro emission rating is. Uh, nowadays, the low emission zones or restricted access zones are expanding rapidly throughout Europe. And if you have an older vehicle, like, you, us. Mm -hmm. like us, you'll be severely limited to where you're allowed to travel, if you're allowed to travel at all. Like, you need to be a Euro 6, really, to safeguard yourself for the next few years. I know mm. this, is, this is a real challenge, but just something to keep in mind. I mean, this doesn't have to stop you from seeing places. We've been to many amazing cities. All it means is that you have to park a little bit further outside the city mm. and use public transport to go inside. So it's a consideration, but it's not something that is going to stop you from seeing places. What will you be using it for? and how much time you'll be spending in it, what season and where you'll be spending mm. that time. Is it in your home country? Is it in foreign countries? Is it in multiple countries? Gosh, we're really spreading the information thin here. <laughs> I'm not sure you have any use. <laughs> we're moving on to the next section, layout and size. Now, this is where all the compromises start. <laughs> yes, and of course, there is some uh, overlap between what your layout mm. and size is that will suit your type of use. So this follows on from the previous section. Obviously, there's not one single layout that works for everyone. And this is where it becomes so important, if you can, to either rent, loan, just spend time looking at various layouts and thinking about how you're going to use it. But there's no substitute for being in a vehicle. Mm. I remember when we started in 2018 and we loaned my uncle's camper van and he started showing me about the toilets and the shower. I was like, man, you know what? We're going to campsites. I'm not going to use that toilet. That, or the that's shower. Fine. Or the shower. Don't worry shower? about it. Yeah, who needs a shower? Three years later, we came back, we bought a motorhome and for us, almost number one priority the was the layout of the bathroom, mm. having space for full permanent bathroom shower toilet but that depends on your on your lifestyle and what you need we, we're quite active so we run in the mornings we do some water sport and having access to an indoor shower and obviously mm -hmm. living in the motor on full time you know the idea that you're gonna put your I don't know your, your shower hose through the window and shower outside nature is, is far-fetched from reality. I was just thinking about that this morning when you use Crazy. the outside shower. You know, the point is that yes, you can come inside and put your hose outside, but why is the outside shower there? So that you don't have to come inside. You want to access that mm -hmm. from outside, clean, dirty, sandy feet when you come off the beach. I can tell you guys now that even after spending probably a combined 20 months in the motorhome, okay, we still to this day have discussions on what is the best layout <laughs> for us for us <laughs> okay? Let alone for anybody because else. we've learned that <laughs> everything has a compromise now first thing you have to learn is when you go out and you want to buy a second-hand motor very few motorhomes have been designed for two people yes <laughs> especially most, in Italy mo in Europe most motorhomes are designed to sleep four to five or even six or more people so either you have to order it off the factory floor and you have specs specifically for your requirements or you have to buy something which probably gonna have more beds than you need or some other random layout to accommodate more people so this is the difficulty so firstly how many people are going to be traveling if you have kids what's practical for your kids you know so keep that in uh, mind when you decide you get different shapes and sizes you get the semi integrated like we have that means that um, the front cab is sort of part of the vehicle but not really and this varies between them you get semi integrators which are really more separate mm. and some which really do integrate quite well especially the more modern ones and then you get semi integrated with an over cab bed uh, it's quite popular especially for kids because mm -hmm. it does uh, greatly impact the usable living space if you can use that for for extra beds and then of course you get fully integrated vehicles which is like um, a very very different sort of layout integrating the front cab area as part of your living space and those not only have a spatial benefit but mm. also from a waterproofing point of view the fact that it's a single shell Correct. there's a lot of benefits to a fully integrated van but keep in mind like basics so how tall are you can you sleep <laughs> width wise in the vehicle do you do you have to consider a typical a type of 
bed layout. Are you a person who gets up multiple times in the night? It's one thing to be able to have a mm -hmm. width wise bed, but if you have to climb over each other, it's fine for a weekend trip. It's not a problem. But if you have to do that day in and day out and you're disturbing each other's sleep, it really does become a problem. And then also consider a few other practical things like, do you need a toilet in your van? First, firstly, personally, we think it's quite necessary. If you want to take fully advantage of motorhoming in Europe specifically, mm -hmm. It is an absolute necessity. Now, what type of toilet is completely up to you. A whole uh, different discussion. That's a whole different discussion. Actually, a discussion worth having at some point. Because that ultimately limits how long you can stay off-grid. And it depends where you are, once again. Certain countries are more suitable to chemical cassette mm. toilets and others are more suitable to a composting. For perhaps. sure. For sure. So the other things to think about is storage space. How much room do you need? If you are a snowboard, a skier, a kite surfer, we kite surf, mm. we have two subs, we have kites, it's, it's, we have bicycles, we have all these random exercise equipment and we need space for it and of course we need some storage for our normal stuff so keep that in mind where do you need to put your stuff and very much leading on to that how do you live if you're a very active person you will need to carry more water so those are all aspects that's very important. And also what you'll be doing in it in the van. If you're going to be working in the van, you need workspace to be able to sit, work independently, move around each other. Exactly. Can one person be in the bed and another person work at the same time? Or does the bed fall on top of the table, or lie on top of the table? I think all of this sort of leads on to how you're going to use it. How long will you be in the van at a certain time? But let's quickly touch on the size I aspect think that's of the important. vehicle because this is one thing we keep revisiting as we want more storage but mm. everything has a price because the bigger your vehicle becomes the more complicated it is firstly to drive it's more expensive to drive because um, you might pay more for ferries and tolls firstly it's more complicated to drive because of the width and length of the vehicles you can't park it anywhere and at the moment in Europe, it seems like six meter length is a cutoff oh, when it comes to certain ferries, ferries mm. and also some parking restrictions, things yes. like that, sometimes even shorter. But six meters is an important length to keep in mind. It's not just, you know, that if you're 6.1, you're over six meters. If you, the thing is, six meters sounds great, but it's actually very short. And I don't think it's practical for a full time motor until, unless you it's something. Yeah, absolutely, fully integrated, specifically made for you. Just keep in mind that there's always enough space where you can load more stuff in. Good, it, it, space is not a problem, but your weight becomes a problem. Not only just from a practical perspective, but also from a legal perspective. So if your vehicle is classed as a sub 3.5 ton vehicle, firstly, your license might restrict you to only drive vehicles of that class if you want a vehicle that goes over it you might need a special license and keep in mind you may be limited to where you're allowed to drive mm -hmm. so that's a major consideration so six meters three and a half ton and these are the ones that we were also aware of when we bought our motorhome mm. but the third thing which we've realized now is actually almost for us now more important is the width of your vehicle oh yeah pretty you know, in europe you travel windy roads france italy narrow little places mm. that you have to go and the width of your vehicle becomes so critical and only now are manufacturers starting to focus on this narrow and starting vehicles. to make narrower vehicles so yeah. now you get vehicles in the class of 2.12 wide whereas some of the fully integrators are as wide as 2.37 <laughs> and that's a difference of 15 centimeters which doesn't is quite sound, a lot it doesn't sound like a lot but you go drive in Norway <laughs> or in Italy and I'll tell you what you're going to know that that 15 centimeters makes a difference apart from the length and the width and weight also remember that the height of the vehicle is equally important because a lot of times you limit it with ferries you limit it to bridges and overpasses and it can really uh, restrict where you are allowed to drive. And I would say there about three meters is that cutoff for being below it Probably. usually and above it. If possible. And our last category of question that you need to ask yourself is how much should you be spending? Obviously this once again has to do with <laughs> is this your full-time home? Have you sold your house and this is what you're putting your money into? It's how you're going to be living and traveling for the next few years? How much should you spend? As much as you want. Just know that you'll probably never get it back again. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll get a lifetime's worth of memories from living and traveling yeah. in a motorhome. I think you have to keep in mind that, so you pretty much have the option of waiting for months or even years to get a new vehicle off the factory, or you have to buy a new available vehicle 
in a standard layout from a dealer or then a second hand vehicle either privately or from a dealer those are your options now both have massive um, pros and cons unfortunately in europe you need to mostly be a resident to be able to register a vehicle in your own name and if you buy from a dealer that whole process is a lot simpler i would say sometimes there's value buying a new vehicle the resale value might be better you obviously uh, if you buy from a dealer there's benefits such as some sort of a warranty or some some um you know, recourse if there's any issues and peace of mind if you buy privately remember that you must get some sort of a third party multi-point checkup that's always good practice make sure you understand the full implication of buying a vehicle what is the long-term implication uh, is it something you're going to be traveling for 10 years then maybe it's worth spending more money on it apart from the actual vehicle obviously there are some costs such as your your insurance your licensing fees your and maintenance and keeping that in mind when you purchase a vehicle you should decide who do you purchase it from and that you might spend money in addition to the vehicle itself and consider that also how much you spend isn't necessarily relative to how much you get very often an older layout like for us it was worth spending a little bit less and rather spending the money customizing the vehicle to ourselves lisa alluded to it should you buy should you rent and frankly a lot of people should rather rent because ownership isn't necessarily the cheapest way to do it and especially if you aren't 100 percent sure how long you want to do this and whether you're going to like it that initial investment even at the end of the day if you end up spending a little bit more if it gives you that reassurance of knowing that this is what you want to do you will then make a better choice in mm -hmm. your final purchase of motorhome and then of course in addition to your purchase of the vehicle no matter what you spend on the vehicle there will no doubt be additional costs to customize it for your use and this can be a few different things well yeah in our case it was our motorhome didn't come with any sort of solar panels and it definitely didn't have enough batteries for our requirement or you might we have to convert to a refillable lpg system so you can travel f throughout countries in europe or it might be simply uh, reupholstering the furniture or changing the, the mattress. mattress. <laughs> the thing with a motorhome is it's like any other space you actually live in, it's constant maintenance, constant improvement. And it's just something you need to keep in mind that in all likelihood, you're not going to walk off that dealer floor or drive away with it and be like, hey, this is going to be perfect. Of course, there is an added benefit if you do manage to find a second-hand motorhome that has been used in a similar manner mm. to which you want to use it. So, for instance, if you're buying from somebody who's lived in a motorhome full-time, things like solar panels, battery storage, those kind of things might be perfectly geared towards you versus if it was just a holiday vehicle and it has no solar like these old motorhomes generally are. In conclusion, in conclusion, even after traveling my motorhome around Europe for multiple years, we are still constantly discussing and debating various options available. So I know some of our advice might be a bit wishy-washy, but it's just to plant a seed so you can ask those questions for yourself. These vehicles are not really designed to live in full time. So you have to constantly adjust sort of your expectations. And unfortunately, social media has also created this image of what full-time motorhome living can mm. be which isn't always true no not very so, practical no everything is a compromise and you ultimately will have to find something that balances your requirements with reality there's a balance between what is comfortable to live in when you're stationary and the fact that it's a mobile home what mm -hmm. is comfortable for moving around navigating narrow roads steep roads going through towns and villages and being out in the open, wanting to live off-grid, wanting to visit cities. There's always going to be a balance between all of that. And half of the fun of purchasing your own motor home is thinking about it, looking at various <laughs> options, doing the shopping, doing the homework. Driving yourself crazy. Driving yourself crazy like we still are doing two years later. So the thought we want to leave you with is that even after traveling for so long and living in our motor home, we're still loving it and it's a fantastic way to especially travel this part of the world we can only recommend it just remember that your style of travel might affect your experience we, uh, we travel very slow because we don't have uh, specific deadlines to meet and we found that this is the ultimate way to see europe at its best guys we're going to wrap this up i hope you, we may have 
giving you something to chew on and next time we'll be back with one of our normal travel videos and if you mm -hmm. haven't seen any of them we're still traveling to Italy so please hit the subscribe button and smash the like button leave us a comment below yeah. tell us if there's anything else that you should consider yeah. when buying your first motor and tell us if you've already done this and whether it was a complete success or a complete disaster <laughs> and thanks for watching as always and we'll catch you guys on the road bye, bye.